Hello everyone, I'm Alex Dykes, and today on Alex Nautos, we're out here taking a look at the 2015 Volkswagen Jetta. Volkswagen has refreshed the Jetta for the 2015 model year, so none of the hard points in the vehicle have changed. That means that the overall size of the vehicle has remained about the same, but we have new bumpers, front and rear new option packages, and new engines under the hood. Now the model we're taking a look at right here is the Volkswagen Jetta TDI SEL, and this is the model that we'll be focusing on in this video. If you hadn't noticed, Alex Nautos has now switched to 4K production, so if you want to click on that quality little icon down there on the YouTube video bar, you can switch over to 4K resolution. Up front, the Jetta has received an all-new front end for the 2015 model year, bringing it a little bit more in line with the rest of the Volkswagen models, including its larger brother, the Volkswagen Passat. We have this bolder three-bar grille right down here, and those same horizontal bars continue all the way across the bottom of the Jetta. Our particular model has the optional LED fog lamps that are also used as cornering lamps. We also have the optional bi-xenon HID headlamps. In addition to these xenon lamps being used for both the high beams and the low beams, they also steer into the corners, which is a very nice feature. We have LED daytime running lamps circling around that lamp module as well. Some big changes for the 2015 model year in terms of feature content are an available forward collision warning system, and it places a radar sensor right here behind this large Volkswagen logo on the grille. It operates very much like those radar cruise control systems that you see in more expensive models. However, in the Jetta, we do not get that radar cruise control functionality. We simply get the pre-collision warning functionality. To help improve aerodynamics, most of the Jettas that you'll see out on the road also include active grille shutters. That includes the TDI model that we're taking a look at right here. That blocks off the front of the vehicle to give you better aerodynamics and also to help the engine heat up a little bit faster in cold weather. If you're thinking the Jetta looks big for a compact vehicle, then you're right. At 182 inches long, the Jetta is one of the largest vehicles in this compact category. A Honda Civic rings in at 175 inches, and the Ford Focus is 173 inches towards the bottom end of the scale in terms of overall length. When you compare the Jetta's overall profile with something like the Mazda 3, then you'll notice we have a little bit less hood going on right here. That means we have a little bit more interior room for the overall exterior dimensions when compared to that Mazda 3. Now the reason for that is all under the Mazda's hood because of their exhaust manifold arrangement in the Mazda 3. It really gives it a more rear wheel drive proportion. However, rear wheel drive proportions are in general a little bit less efficient in terms of space on the inside for given space on the outside. In addition to the new front end, 2015 also brings us a new back end and a new trunk lid for the Jetta, again to bring it more in line with the rest of the Volkswagen lineup, especially that larger Passat. Even though we have the top end TDI SEL model, we do not get LED tail lamps. Those are reserved only for the hybrid and the GLI trim. Our particular model has twin exhaust tips right over there on the driver's side of the vehicle. And we do have a backup camera right here below the Volkswagen logo. When it comes to exterior style, I'll give this nine out of 10 points. This is probably my second favorite vehicle in this segment in terms of the overall looks. I really like restrained and elegant styling, and that's definitely what's going on in the Volkswagen Jetta. I would say this is second to the Mazda 3, which is a very aggressive, very different kind of look in this segment, but I would actually tie this with the 2015 Ford Focus, which has just received an all-new nose and an all-new rump. Things start out in that base model with a 2-liter 4-cylinder engine. It produces 115 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque. That is a little bit lower than you'll find most of the base engines in this segment. That's made it to either a 5-speed manual or a traditional 6-speed automatic transmission. Most models you'll find on the dealer lot will use the 1.8 liter turbo engine. It's a 170 horsepower, 184 pound foot of torque engine, again mated to the same five speed manual or six speed automatic transmission. The model we're taking a look at right here is a brand new turbo diesel for America. It's a two liter turbo diesel engine that shares only 15% of its parts with the old turbo diesel in the US. It produces 150 horsepower, which is slightly higher than before, and 236 pound feet of torque. This is mated either to a six speed manual transmission or a six speed dual clutch DSG transmission. If performance is your thing, the Volkswagen Jetta GLI will give you a 2-liter turbocharged engine producing 210 horsepower and 207 pound-feet of torque, mated again to the same 6-speed manual and the same 6-speed dual-clutch DSG. The Jetta Hybrid uses a 1.4-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine with direct injection, giving you a total of 170 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. It's mated to a 27-horsepower electric motor, a lithium-ion battery pack in the back of the vehicle, and a standard 7-speed DSG. With so many different engine options available, the Jetta comes in all across the map when it comes to fuel economy. The 2-liter base engine comes in at 25 miles per gallon city, 34 highway if you get the manual transmission, 23, 34 if you get the automatic transmission. I'll let you refer to the chart over there on the side of your screen for all the detailed numbers. According to the EPA, the Jetta TDI that we're taking a look at right here should average 31 miles per gallon city, 46 highway, and 34 combined with the 6-speed manual transmission, 31, 45, 34 with the 6-speed DSG that we have in this vehicle right here. 
However, I can tell you right now that those numbers are not true. This vehicle gets much better fuel economy than that, as we've come to expect out of Volkswagen's diesels. The Jetta Hybrid comes in at 42 miles per gallon city, 48 highway, and 45 combined, giving you the best fuel economy in the Jetta on paper. However, in my driving experience, the Jetta Hybrid failed to receive those lofty EPA numbers. It averaged more like 40 miles per gallon in the combined driving cycle, whereas this vehicle averaged more than 40 miles per gallon in its combined driving cycle. Like many diesels in the U.S. market, the Jetta uses a urea injection system, also known as diesel exhaust fluid, or AdBlue, which is the brand name that Volkswagen uses for it. You'll find that filler neck right here in the trunk. There's this little knob right there that you open up. You do have to use a funnel right here in the trunk to keep you from spilling it all in the contents of your cargo area. Depending on your driving style, that diesel exhaust fluid could last as little as 2,500 miles according to Volkswagen. However, most users should see significantly higher mileage out of the four gallons of diesel exhaust fluid that the vehicle holds. Front seat comfort comes in at 8 out of 10 points. I did find the seats in the Honda Civic as well as the Ford Focus a little bit more comfortable for my body shape, but these are very comfortable seats. One thing to keep in mind is that even in this SEL model, we do not have a power passenger seat, and this power driver seat doesn't have the same range of motion as you'll find in some of the competition. Most notably, we cannot raise and lower the front of the seat bottom cushion electrically, so we just raise the back like this, separate from the front. The Jetta provides a decent amount of front legroom as well as front headroom, and we do have a tilt telescopic steering column with a moderate range of motion. Rear seat comfort comes in at 9 out of 10 points. The Jetta has a great deal of legroom as you can see right here. This front seat is adjusted for me at 6 feet tall. I have about 4.5 inches of legroom left right there. Headroom, however, is a little bit limited. We are in the model with the optional sunroof, but my head is touching the ceiling as I sit back in this seat. If I move all the way over to the right side of the vehicle, this front seat was adjusted for a 6 foot 5 passenger I had in the car, and I still have about 2 inches of legroom left right there. Scooting over to the middle seat, it's important to keep in mind that the Jetta is a compact vehicle, so this rear bench seat is not as wide as you'll find in a mid-size sedan, something like a Volkswagen Passat. Still, the ceiling is shaped, so that way my head is just barely touching the ceiling. It's not really worse in terms of headroom than these outboard bucket seats. Rear passengers do have a fold-down center armrest with two cup holders right here, and the rear bench seat does fold in a 60-40 folding fashion, but the handles for that release are in the trunk. Now keep in mind as we're looking around this interior that we are in the TDI SEL trim and trim options do vary from trim to trim. Although we do have a leather steering wheel and a leather shifter in this vehicle, these seats are actually leatherette. This is not real leather, this is actually an imitation leather product. It's a little bit different than you'll find in some of the other entries in the compact segment because most of the other entries do offer a real leather seating surface option. Moving over to the door panel, it may seem like we're in black and white mode, but we are actually in color mode. We just have an awful lot of blacks going on here on the door panel. Mostly hard touch plastics like you'll find in most of the subcompact vehicles, although we do have a soft touch armrest right there, for both the driver and the front passenger. This is not a tweeter right here in front of the door handle. If you were in a right-hand drive country, that's where your side view mirror adjustment controls would be located. We have power locks, of course, and then we have imitation carbon fiber trim right up there on the top of the door. Moving over to the dashboard, we have a soft touch injection molded upper dashboard. We again have more imitation carbon fiber going on right here. And then we have hard touch plastics lower in the dashboard. Because we have the up level fender audio system, you will find these tweeters right over here on the A pillar. Moving down the dashboard, we have a surprisingly large glove compartment right here. And we have a two level storage area. So we can put an iPad or other large tablet computer right up here on this top shelf. Then we have this large storage bin right below it with additional holders for change as well as a pen right over there. Moving across the dashboard, you can see we have this very traditional single bump dashboard right here. And then it goes pretty much straight across right over there on the passenger side of the vehicle. That's because the head unit for the navigation system as well as the radio is right here lower in the dashboard. Moving to the center of the dashboard, we have these two large air vents right up here. We have our hazard lamp button right there in the middle, and then we have our infotainment and navigation system right there below it. If you want to know more about this infotainment and navigation system, then go ahead and click on that banner at the bottom of your screen, and we'll go on over to this same unit in a different vehicle. Unfortunately, this generation Jetta still has not received the latest infotainment system from Volkswagen that you will see in the brand new Volkswagen Golf. We do hope that comes up very soon. This is a fairly basic infotainment and navigation system. We do have a nav system right here on this relatively small screen, as well as a complete media interface for your Bluetooth, your USB, or your iPod. Below that infotainment system, we have a two-zone automatic climate control in our particular model. Underneath the climate controls, we do have a storage cubby right here. There is no lid on it, but we can store items like a wallet right in there very easily. We also have a 12 volt power outlet right in there, and you'll find the start stop button just behind that. Working our way down the center console, we have this very traditional Cobra head shifter button right back here on the back. It says DSG right on the top because the TDI model does get a dual clutch gearbox. Sport mode is all the way down as you can see right here. 
If we want manual mode, it's up to drive, and then off to the right, up for up, and down for down. Behind that, we find the handbrake, and we also have two very large cup holders, obviously designed for the North American market. I had no problem fitting the largest takeout sodas I could throw at it right here in both cup holders. Between the front seats, we have the softly padded center armrest. It is height adjustable, so we just lift it up and it locks into certain positions right there. We can open it completely right there and find a relatively small storage cubby. Again, here's a wallet for reference. You can nestle that on right there inside. And then right back here, we have the Volkswagen proprietary multimedia interface cable. Actually, unplug that. You can see what that connector looks like right there. It plugs into this little slot, and then you can get various cables that have either a USB end or an iPhone or iPod end right there. It is adaptable to Apple's latest lightning input method. Over on the driver's side, we have this very traditional Volkswagen instrument cluster. It's very bright, very easily readable. It's a white-faced layout with bright red needles, and as you can see, this diesel engine revs up to about 5,000 RPM right over there. Now, in the middle of this, we have a multi-information display, which is controlled via a new button cluster on the steering wheel. This new button cluster on the steering wheel may require a little bit of explanation. These two buttons right over here toggle between screens. So you can see right there in the background that we're moving across screens like that. We have an OK button in the center. And then within a particular screen, you use these buttons right over here to scroll through the options and again, the OK button to enter. Now this multifunction display does give you things like your trip computers. You can see we've been averaging 44.9 miles per gallon over the last 554 miles, which is excellent. We also get instant consumption, range, route, average speed, that sort of thing right there on this display, as well as engine oil temperature, and you can set a speed warning so the computer will alert you if you go over a particular speed. If we move across, you can see that we do have an audio information display right there, navigation, phone interface, we can scroll down and we can see number uh, history, we can dial a particular number, you can browse through your phone book, etc. You can move across and enable or disable vehicle assistance systems, so our particular model does have the front assist system. It also has the rear cross traffic alert system, as well as the blind spot, and of course the steering headlamps. Going back to that button cluster on the right side of the steering wheel for just one moment, we have a phone button right over there, voice command button, and then track forward and backward buttons dedicated on this side of the steering wheel. Somewhat unusually, those audio controls are split, so on the left side of the steering wheel, we have our volume up and down buttons right there. And then we have our cruise control buttons right here. System enable, disable, resume, set, up, down, nothing really there in the center, and then a cancel button right down there. Moving out to the steering wheel, this is a very thickly padded sport wheel with a flat bottom right down there. Again, this is leather wrapped, you have sport grips right up here, and then this bottom spoke is sort of a split spoke, so you can stick your finger through it right like that. Over on the driver's side, you will find a manual headlamp control right over here, and that's because although we have HID headlamps in this model, we do not have auto headlamps. Right over here, we have our buttons for our side view mirror adjustment, window switches right down here, and then a power trunk release right down there. Moving up to the ceiling, we have a sunglass holder right here, and then below that, you will find Volkswagen's answer to General Motors OnStar system. This system operates very similarly. We have an SOS button right over here, maintenance button, and of course an I button right there for various vehicle integrated telematic services. This is a cellular service basically, so you do have a subscription for this vehicle. It contacts a Volkswagen call center, and you can ask for directions, connections, vehicle assistance, or of course emergency assistance. It'll also call you automatically if there's an airbag deployment in the vehicle, and they'll check to see if you need medical assistance. We have the controls for our reading lights right over here, and then we have this very Volkswagen unique control for our sunroof. At 15.5 cubic feet, this is a very large trunk, even for your average midsize sedan. Very much like Nissan's product lineup, it allows us to put a 24 inch roller bag in this vertical position right here like that, and then actually close the trunk lid. Even though this trunk is not significantly larger than the average 13 cubic foot trunk size in the compact segment, it's an awful lot more useful because behind this bag in this position, I actually have a 26 inch roller bag in this position in the trunk. It means you can fit more roller bags in the trunk of the Jetta and a lot more child seats as well. If you want to know more about the child seats and the Jetta, you can go ahead and click that binder at the bottom of your screen and you can be transported on over to that video. When it comes to my exclusive trunk comfort index, the Jetta gets nine out of 10 points. Even though we do have room for a full size spare tire under this cargo load floor, I have to knock one point off for these trunk hinges. They do impact the cargo in a way that I would prefer they didn't. However, we do have two handles right here on either side of the trunk lid to help close the trunk lid. Out on the road, there are a few things you'll notice instantly about the Volkswagen Jetta. The first thing is the handling of this vehicle. The Jetta wears 225 width tires. These are extremely wide tires for this compact sedan segment, and that really helps the handling out on the road. Overall, I'll give this 10 out of 10 points when it comes to the handling. When it comes to absolute handling numbers, the Jetta easily outhandles all current versions of the Mazda 3. When it comes to handling feel, however, the Mazda 3 feels a little bit more connected to the driver. You definitely get more feedback from the steering 
out on the open road, but in terms of absolute road holding, the Jetta is hands down better, even in this TDI version. The diesel drivetrain definitely defines the way this Jetta feels out on the road. Even though this engine does produce a decent amount of horsepower, the way that the horsepower and the torque is delivered really makes this a little bit slower than the rest of the Jettas out on the road. I scored 0 to 60, just under 10 seconds, and that gives this a 6 out of 10 point score when it comes to performance. The Jetta TDI will run faster 0-60 to 60 than any of the Prius models that are out there, however most of the other gasoline models in this segment are going to be faster than the TDI. The other thing the TDI is really notable for is this DSG transmission. Now Volkswagen has been at the dual clutch transmission game for a decent amount of time and it really shows in the polish level that we experience in this transmission. This is second only to Acura's brand new transmission that includes a torque converter in their dual clutch transmission that really helps it improve low speed performance. So this transmission has that same crawling problem that you get in all the other dual clutch gearboxes that are out there. If you're trying to crawl around at one or two miles an hour, this transmission can feel a little bit jerky at times. That's because it is a traditional manual transmission on the inside. It's just that the computer is doing all the shifting for you. So it has that same manual transmission feel when you're trying to crawl along very slowly. In all other circumstances, however, this transmission feels incredibly smooth. It's also incredibly fast. The incredibly fast shifting helps the diesel feel a little bit more engaging, and of course, the lack of the torque converter seriously improves fuel economy. And that brings me along to the topic that everybody has been waiting for, which is fuel economy, and it is incredibly impressive in this TDI model. I'll give this 10 out of 10 points very easily. I have been averaging over uh, 380 miles of very mixed driving so far, 49 miles per gallon, which is higher than the EPA highway score in this vehicle. Now to tell you how high that really is, I have been going up and over a 2200 foot mountain pass every day in this vehicle, driving on roads like I'm driving right now in this vehicle, and I'm still averaging 48 miles per gallon. Now a lot of that efficiency has to do with the diesel engine, but a decent amount has to do specifically with the Jetta TDI, because we get fuel saving features like this dual clutch automatic transmission, which really help out on the highway, and we also get active shutter grills. Those help out on the highway because it improves the aerodynamic efficiency of the vehicle. When you're out on your favorite winding mountain road like this, the handling abilities of this Jetta are readily apparent. This handles much, much better than any of the other fuel sipping vehicles in this segment, and that also includes the ultra efficient versions of the Mazda 3. The fuel economy numbers in the Mazda 3 are excellent, but those excellent fuel economy numbers are achieved with a manual transmission, the smallest engine, and relatively narrow tires compared to the Jetta TDI that we're taking a look at right here. As I have said many times, handling and ride are usually opposite ends of the same teeter-totter, and that's definitely true for the Jetta. Because we have excellent handling numbers in this vehicle, the ride goes down just a little bit. The sedan is very firmly sprung in this particular trim level, and of course with these wide tires, I can easily feel every imperfection out on this winding mountain road. Of course, putting that ride number in perspective, my personal preference is the vehicle that handles better rather than the one that rides better. So I would take a vehicle that handles 10 out of 10 points and rides 6 out of 10 points any day over a sedan that had a 10 out of 10 point ride and a 6 out of 10 point handling score. Road noise is very well controlled in the Jetta, but one thing to keep in mind is that the engine is a little bit harsher sounding than the gasoline engines that you get in the same vehicle. That's really noticeable when you're accelerating or when you're going up steep grades. However, if you're just cruising along on the highway, there's very little difference between this and the gasoline Jetta. Helping keep the Jetta fresh for this year, we have a few new things for the 2015 model year, and those include blind spot warning system and a forward collision warning system. Now this does not combine with radar cruise control, even though this is a radar based warning system. So it's not like those camera based systems like you'll find from Subaru or some of the other manufacturers out there. It actually uses a radar module hidden behind that Volkswagen grill I showed you earlier, and acts very much like a radar based cruise control system, determining the distance between you and the car in front of you, and whether or not it thinks you're going to hit that car. It'll warn you right here in this multi-information display between the tachometer and the speedometer. Radar-based systems like the one that's in this vehicle right here tend to perform better in inclement weather. So this will still operate and function in fog or in mist or in rain, and that's something that the other camera-based systems have difficulties operating in. While I'm talking about changes for 2015, these optional HID headlamps are a significant improvement over the outgoing headlamps in the vehicle. They're very, very bright, and they also have a steering function to them, which helps steer into the corners. Now, they don't steer as much as some of those vehicles out there, but I did find it very helpful at night on these same winding mountain roads. Let's talk 2015 pricing. The Jetta does advertise that it starts at $16,215, but the thing you need to know is that that base model Jetta needs to be ordered. It's actually not going to be found on dealer lots. On dealer lots, the cheapest vehicle that you'll find is the $17,325 S model with the manual transmission. If you want the automatic, that will set you back $18,425. 
I suspect that most shoppers will be looking at a 1.8 liter SE that's nicely configured for around 22325 If you want the TDI model, that will start at $21,640, again for the manual transmission. The one that we're taking a look at right here is just over $30,000, essentially fully loaded. The Jetta Hybrid is the most expensive Jetta you can buy in the United States, and it will set you back $31,670. At $18,490, Honda Civic is more expensive than both the base version of the Jetta or the Jetta that you'll actually find on dealer lots without ordering. The base Civic has more power than the base version, that would be the 2.0-liter version of the Jetta. However, it has less than the 1.8T version of the Jetta, which does have that turbo engine and it will give you more low-end torque especially than any of those naturally aspirated competitors. The Civic handles very well, but not as well as the Jetta. The Jetta really is the handling champion in this segment, both in terms of feel as well as in terms of road grip. I found the seats in the Civic a little bit more comfortable than those in the Jetta, but it really depends on your body shape. So you do want to spend a decent amount of time in the vehicle before you buy the car. The other area where the Jetta lagged behind the Civic is in the infotainment systems. The infotainment and navigation system, especially in our SEL model compared to the top end trims that you'll find in the rest of the competition, really lags behind the rest of those competitors. Starting at $16,900, Toyota's Corolla is very inexpensive and it has a few flashy features standard like the LED headlamps that you don't get on the Volkswagen Jetta. However, that base model Corolla gets a manual transmission, and if you want an automatic transmission, your only choice for that base price is the old 4-speed automatic. If you want the more modern CVT, then that Corolla LE will set you back $18,515. Now, without a doubt, the Jetta handles much better than that Toyota Corolla. The Toyota Corolla is towards the bottom end of the segment in terms of overall road experience. The base version of the Corolla with the manual transmission will beat the manual transmission base version of the Volkswagen Jetta. However, once you add the automatic transmission, the Jetta will still be faster even though it has a little bit less power because we get two extra gears in the transmission. Now, without a doubt, the 1.8T model will be considerably faster than that Corolla. Although the Jetta is without a doubt a better buy in terms of value, the Corolla does come back with incredible reliability and slightly better resale value. It also has better infotainment options, especially in the upper level trims. At $17,170 starting, Ford's Focus is one of the most expensive base vehicles in this particular segment. Now the Ford Focus is undeniably attractive, but it's also one of the smaller entries. So if you're after rear seat room especially, or trunk room, then the Jetta is probably the better buy for you. Ford's Focus is also without a doubt the most premium entry in this segment, with features that you just don't find on the Volkswagen Jetta or the majority of the competition. Rather uniquely, Ford's fuel economy option is the three-cylinder version with the six-speed manual transmission. So if you are after high fuel economy and an automatic, you should not be looking at the Ford Focus, you should be looking at the Volkswagen Jetta. Handling is relatively similar Volkswagen Jetta to the Ford Focus, but that Focus is a little bit smaller. The Mazda 3 has long been known as the handling champion in this particular segment, but the Jetta really ties with that Mazda 3 when it actually comes to road holding numbers. The Mazda 3 does have an improved steering feel, especially on winding mountain roads. We get an awful lot more feedback through the steering column in that Mazda than we do in the Volkswagen. The Mazda is also without a doubt one of the most attractive entries in this segment. It's also incredibly well equipped and a decent amount of value. However, Mazda does not offer things like a diesel, a turbo, or a hybrid in their lineup, so if you're after any of those things, then the Jetta is really going to be your only option. We also have a more accommodating trunk and a slightly more accommodating rear seat passenger area in the Jetta than we do in that Mazda. If you're after value rather than power, options, or fuel economy in this segment, the Kia Forte really is the best value. With the longest warranty and a wide variety of standard and optional features, the Forte beats even the luxury end of this Volkswagen Jetta. In the top end trims, when you compare the Volkswagen Jetta with the 1.8 liter turbo engine to the Kia Forte, you're getting an awful lot more equipment for your dollar in that Forte than you will in the Jetta. Comparing most trims of the Forte to most trims of the Volkswagen Jetta, the Forte will get lower fuel economy. However, it will take you a decent amount of time to pay off that difference. When taking a look at any high fuel efficiency vehicle, especially an alternative fuel vehicle like this diesel right here or a hybrid model, it's important that you really take a close look at operational costs to decide whether or not it's going to save money. Yes, this turbo diesel version right here that we're taking a look at is incredibly efficient. I averaged over 48 miles per gallon very easily, and on some trips I actually averaged over 58 miles per gallon on a one-way highway trip, around 50-60 miles or so. However, diesel is more expensive in the United States, and that's an important thing to keep in mind because the 1.8 liter turbo model will cost you about $1,376 a year, 15,000 mile a year in order to operate. This diesel costs you $1,060 a year, and that's before you factor in the add blue cost that you do need to add right here in the trunk in order to keep this diesel emission system happy. The diesel exhaust fluid helps reduce emissions and it also helps improve fuel economy, but of course it does cost you extra. The base version of the Jetta will cost $1,542 a year to operate. It is more expensive to operate than that 1.8 turbo model. So if you're taking a look at 
return on investment that 1.8T model is probably the best model for most shoppers. The hybrid model will actually save you money. It's $876 a year in terms of operational cost, but because that hybrid only comes in the absolute top end trim of the Jetta, you won't actually save any money unless you are also planning to buy the top end trims of the other vehicles. It'll still take about 10 years or so. That means that the break-even point for the average driver in this Volkswagen Jetta TDI is over 8.5 years if you're taking a look at the 2.0 base model and 15 years if you're taking a look at the similarly equipped 1.8T. I've saved the elephant in the room for last because I think that the Volkswagen Passat is truly the best competition for the Volkswagen Jetta. And it's sitting right there on the same dealer lot as the Volkswagen Jetta, especially this TDI model that we're taking a look at right here. Now, if you take a look at this SEL model that we've been looking at, versus a Passat TDI SE. The Passat lacks the two-zone climate control that this Jetta has right here, and we don't get the imitation leather seats either. We get cloth in that Passat. However, the Passat is a decent amount larger, and it's also just about as fuel efficient because it's very similar under the hood. Now, the Passat SEL versus the Jetta SEL, it will cost you about $3,500 more, but it has about $2,000 of additional standard equipment, not to mention the extra size that you get in that Passat versus the Jetta. Those additional features on the Passat SEL include real leather seating, a power passenger seat, remote start, rain sensing wipers, and a better navigation system. If you're shopping in this segment, especially if you're taking a look at the Jetta TDI SEL, which is a basically fully loaded Jetta at $30,000, you'd do well to put that Passat on your cross shopping list. Everybody's out getting the Christmas trees. You would be more efficient if you were driving a Jetta. Oh, we're stopping, shit. Of course, if you're stuck in stop and go traffic like we are right here, you probably won't notice much of a fuel economy benefit because the engine is idling and we're not moving. Someone probably lost their Christmas tree. Yep, how'd I know it? I knowed it. <laughs> 